herbal tea. Participate in the chat even if it's just to say hello. The stream has rules and regulations and no, the chat does not always win. By the way, what is your scent of the day? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Miami Cologne Blogger. I will be going out and about in Miami. I know that's what people want. They don't want to see my boring apartment, although it's still the best in Fradcom. I may not have the best personality, but my place has the best background, even better than Callie's groom room. I'm not a show off. Okay. Now, I like the guy, man. I like the guy. Uh, I'll cut to the chase because some people will only watch this for like a minute and I'm going to get down to the nitty gritty. The two best vintage fragrances. All right. Guerlain Heritage. Okay. Guerlain Heritage. Three best fragrances. So for those people who have a short attention span, I have a short attention span. Cartier de Santos. Santos de Cartier. I'm going to get into it, but like, if you just like, oh, I don't have any time to listen to this, this guy ramble on, pick up this, pick up this, and pick up, well, I have more, but uh, Maxim's Poor Home, just pick up Maxim's Poor Home. It's pretty much widely available on eBay. Now, here's something that irritates me. I'm 58 years old. I lived during the 70s, okay? If you don't shave, you have no right to talk about vintage fragrances, okay? Because that's what it's all about. Look, what is this? It's called aftershave. Aftershave. Is for pouring on your skin after you shave. Pretty simple concept, right? But people don't understand it. Paul Sebastian. After shave. Explains why I love aftershave to this day. And aftershave can't be beaten. And shaving the face can't be beaten. By the way. My buddy in upstate Florida, he recommended this. I'm not a big fan, but I did get the key lime. It smells very uh, laden with chemicals. It just doesn't, but I, I think it does something good to, for my skin. This is, uh, they sold it on Amazon, and I was looking to do a nice review for it. I just don't like it, though. I mean, let's go with the chat. Let's see. We got some chat chatters. Chat. A to Z cuddles crew. What's up, Ultimate Prime? The public wants to see you drive around old Miami in an open top Cadillac. In an old white 1979 Cadillac Eldorado, the boat car. I would like to see myself driving in, around an old Cadillac Eldorado with a convertible off myself. I mean, dude. You could fit a family in there, like six people. I mean, you know, it was like a couch. You know, now we have, I guess they're called bucket seats. And, you know, no, we, there was a couch in the front and a couch in the back. And you could put four, like, spring breakers back there and four spring breakers in the front. And it was just like 
there was something sexy about it. Turn your AC Delco. Yeah, it, it didn't come from AC Delco. Uh, stereo up. And it had a little, I mean, I've been in one like in the last 10 years. It had a compass there in the middle. I, I have a pretty good memory. The speedometer from zero to like 120, you know, with the red Back in those days, man. I, I mean, I miss those days. Uh, Cadillac Eldorados were great. Oldsmobile, Oldsmobile Tor, was it Torino? It was a classy car. Was it uh, Oldsmobile Torino or something? I had one. And uh, it was blue and it had a sunroof. And it was awesome. It was just awesome. Uh, the cars today just can't compete. Uh, you know, it's just like cookie cutter cars now it's just like you know just get a car to get from point a to point b i mean we have so much traffic and it's like people are fighting over parking spaces here i mean those cars could like they couldn't fit on the uh they couldn't fit on the highway man because like they they you know what they did with the lanes is they try to add an extra lane so they they cut the lanes. They narrowed them down. I mean, you think a boat Cadillac Eldorado could fit down that lane? No way. I mean, 18-wheelers do so, but it's just not the same, man. It's not, you know, it, like, here's 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 a common thing we did. Okay, I'm, I'm driving, but my hand's out the window. Everybody's hand was out the window. You can't do that anymore because you got some crazy guys. I mean, they had some people in Miami just stop in the middle of I-95 and, and you know, started revving their cars and they have motorcycles doing wheelies with women on the back. I'm like, oh, this is crazy, man. Outlaws, outlaws. We need law and order. We need law and order. Harley Davidson used to have awesome aftershaves. Never tried it. Uh, English leather. I'll tell you what, vintage English leather aftershave is amazing. Uh, can't be beat. It's like a dark brown juice if you get it today. I, I was blown away, but like it's a cold weather fragrance. It's it's really, really nice. And, you know, English leather really truly is the king of leathers. Let, let me show you my little video. I got to get some white tea here. Men never cease to amaze me. Some guys don't think twice about the cologne they use. But a cologne says a lot about a man. And I think the cologne that says it best is English leather. English leather has a clean, masculine scent. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, a man should wear English leather or nothing at all. Look, I don't fall for a guy just because he wears a nice cologne. But I know what I like. And I like a man to wear English leather or wear nothing at all. Okay, you could get ombre leather. Ombre leather is a beautiful cologne. I think ombre leather is probably like since English leather, you know, there's a lot of leather colognes out there. But since English leather, ombre leather actually stepped it up. But like... Ombre, ombre leather was like, it changed everything. Like when I first smelled ombre leather, I was like, wow. You know, it, it was just life changing. If you've never smelled ombre leather, uh, go smell that one. Go to your de local department store. It's widely available. You'll be blown away. You'll probably pick up a bottle, even though it's like 150 bucks, Tom Ford. You know, with those uh, snooty salespeople, the reps. I don't like snooty reps. And I don't like reps that talk a lot. I don't like women that talk a lot. And, and that's not chauvinistic to say that. And I like women who have best friends as women. Okay, that's another thing, another hang up I have. Ah, let me get some white tea, man. Uh, uh, I'll be right back. Check out, check this out. 
You wish you lived here, didn't you? Star Rider by Foreigner. One of the best. One of the best Foreigner songs. Now, I, I got to put on these glasses just because my eyes hurt. Sorry. I'm not part of any pit vi viper gang or anything like that. Uh, let's see if Duncan's in here. He He's more knowledgeable about this than me. Fernando, the viewing numbers went up after you left. <laughs> Dude, I told you, they just want to be here. They don't want to see me here. They can't wait till I leave so they can make believe they live here. Happy Sunday. How you doing, Captain Blimp? I love blimps. Blimps were cool back in the day. Captain Blimp, Goodyear Blimp. They used to always visit the Super Bowl. It's like you don't see blimps anymore. Like it's not a thing. Goodyear's not even a thing. Uh, so my tea, oh, it's good, man. White leaf tea. I'm not a fan of green tea. Uh, I'm, it's too bitter. White tea is the best. If, if you want a little energy, because I didn't drink any coffee today, but white tea is the best. Black tea is good. Shout out to the, the British. Mm. But I'll show you the notes and everything, but this can't be beaten. Heritage. You know, I'll tell you what. Um, George doesn't want to hear this. This probably upsets him. But his original fragrance was the best one. His original Zaharoff Poor Home before Signature. It was, it was so good, man. And I think only Duncan has it. Duncan... And like a couple other people, but I smelled it and I was like, oh my God, this stuff is, and, and, and I'll tell you what the secret was, the bay, the bay leaf and the blue lavender. Okay. I don't know what blue lavender is, but it seems like it's a higher quality lavender, but the bay leaf, they use the high quality bay leaf in there. And bay rums are very refreshing. Bay's like one of the best notes in perfumery. Now, there's a, there's a common theme with old school fragrances. Woody spicy. They're all woody spicy. I mean, spiciness wakes you up. Spiciness is is exhilarating, spiciness is masculine, but they all have different kind of woody spices, right? So like say for instance, this. 
1903 by J. Peterman. Shout out to Al. Um, this is a very, very beautiful, like almost Christmassy, Christmassy vibe. Woody spicy. Let me let me go on to Fragrantica to uh, show you the notes. Excuse me. You'll you'll be like, whoa, Jay Peterman. And like this is a cold weather fragrance. Um, I, I, I like having it in my collection and, and I smell it from time to time. But it, it, it does have like the I don't like to go over notes so much because notes, they're all made up. They're all chemical compounds, let's be honest. And, and nobody's going to really know. You know, that's what Jeremy does right. He's like, you know, this is like a fabric softener with a raspberry touch. I mean, people could relate to that. People could relate to Christmas spices, you know. <clears throat> Aromatic citrus, amber, fresh, spicy, tobacco, warm, spicy, leather. So let's see what the score is. 4.47 out of 5 with 30 votes. So it's a woody aromatic. Okay. That's what this is. It's not like so spicy as some of the other ones, but it's it's a very good fragrance. Now, this is one I said you must own. Excuse me. You don't really need to own that one, but and you'll probably never find a bottle. This is like what I highly recommend. Because I have a few vintage fragrances. I don't even think this is the vintage version because I only got it like a year ago, maybe two years ago. Warm, spicy, woody, floral, mossy, earthy leather, aromatic rose, powdery patchouli. Now, now listen, man. You're not going to see those kind of scores with any other fragrance reviewer. And and let me explain something. On the bottom, you see a Chiron, new cannabis fragrance, Zaharoff Signature Dank. Okay, that's not a a dig at George. It's just saying Claude Deer has created one of the best cannabis fragrances, but I have his attention now. I have his attention because he thinks I'm an Oda jerk. I'm not an Oda jerk. And I swear to God on that. Okay. Um, But Claude Deer is an expert when it comes to cannabis fragrances. And I created the word dank and Erica carried on the legacy uh, just because I couldn't think of the word, you know, like fecal or animalic or whatever I was thinking. And I just said, it's a little dank. A and the word has lived on. So I just want to, I mean, signature dank. I mean, marijuana, sort of or cannabis, I should say, has that dank smell anyway. But, like, I'm recommending fragrances with a 4.42. 4.42 with 117 votes. Okay? This is one of the best colognes. And I'm not going to say perfume and I'm not going to say fragrance. Because this is a cologne. And, and we could put it in categories, you know, so I could sound smart. It's a Shebra. Maximum Sport Home was launched in 1988. The nose behind this fragrance is Dominique Ropion. Top notes are Carnation, Lavender, Bergamot, Clary Sage, Almalfi Lemon, my favorite kind of lemon. That's not my That's not my saying. That's Dan's. Middle notes are Rose, Clove, Clove, there we go, Sandalwood, Jasmine, Virginia Cedar, and Amber Base notes are Oak Moss, Leather, Patchouli. But the prices are pretty good. This is a popular perfumer, carnation, masculine, floral. Look at those notes, man. 
Look at those notes. 40 bucks! Hold on. 40 bucks. That's what I'm talking about. I already lost it. Oh, here. 40 bucks. You know how I learned about this? Um, I learned about it through Duncan. He was telling me it's like the best in this category. And he sent me a bunch of samples. A lot of people have sent me a lot of samples of, of vintage fragrances. So I kind of know just from trying hundreds of vintage samples that, you know, I, 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 I question some of the other YouTubers who, who say, like, this is a top tier vintage fragrance. I question that. I think sometimes they got their collection from like a hand-me-down or something. No, this wasn't a hand-me-down. I bought this with my own money. A whole 40 bucks. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Hell yeah. <sighs> yeah. 4.42. Okay. Like, I don't have the fragrance knowledge, but I know what's good and what's not good. And Fragrantica can always back me up, okay? Fragrantica can always back me up. So if you're, it's kind of a colder weather fragrance. Let me warn you, it's a colder weather fragrance. Oh, he's selling for 55. Now, let me tell you about Anuj. Anuj! <clears throat> Too much colognes. I've been spraying colognes all morning. Trying to get the best. Now, this one. It doesn't look like this, okay? Let me just warn you. Santos. Uh, let me see if I could put a banner across the bottom. Um, here's one. I think it's in Enchante Perfumes. Perfume. Okay, so you could get this. See, um, a new sent me. The cap doesn't stay on. I have the cap, but it just doesn't stay on. And it doesn't stand up because I think it was in a leather case at one point. Um, Rudy, who Rudy, Rudy has the knowledge, right? Time to musk up. And he's very descriptive. I'm not descriptive, okay? Um, I go with eternal emotions, which is kind of liberal of me, which, you know, this fragrance right here, this is just the, the one that doesn't stand up, and I just kind of lay it down. Um, what happened is I was walking in my uh, – I was walking a couple guys out. Most of you know them. Uh, Money, Money Burner, and Aram, and he comes up with me from a pre with a present. He says, "Greetings from Canada. This is a present from Anuj. This is he sent me. I would say twenty vintage colognes, like samples, and I, I really wasn't impressed with any of them. To be honest, to be honest." I'm not like this guy that likes every vintage fragrance. And just in case you uh, forgot, Aramis Havana sucks. <sighs> Boy. Anyway. I'm telling you, this is good. Okay, so we're going to... Um, I guess it's this one. I'm assuming this is the modern version. Santos de Cartier. 
um, 4.20 with 1,000 votes. Daniel Malaya. Okay, so here are the notes, and I can't fit them all here, but if I, there we go. We can fit all the notes now. Okay, so this one is awesome. It's relaxing, okay? And, and I know Sticks will say you're using that word too much, but it's relaxing. The other fragrance I went over, Maxims, is more of an invigorating fragrance that kind of wakes you up and it it's definitely old school classic spiciness wake you up kick you in the butt better than a cup of coffee kind of fragrance this is the fragrance that is just like i'm a mellow yellow kind of guy okay but you know this you know, the notes here might have changed because I'm talking about the vintage version. So this is a must if you are looking for a good vintage fragrance. Let me take that off because it doesn't even match what this looks like. Boom. Okay. And, okay, now let me talk about Paul Sebastian. Now, Paul Sebastian Vintage, I, I, I honestly, I like the newer version better. It smells exactly like the modern version, exactly like 100%, but the modern version is less dense. And maybe if I lived in the cold weather, I would wear this more. But it's pretty much a really thick, dense Paul Sebastian. Paul Sebastian is one of the best teepees out there, created by a couple Italian guys. Uh, you know, they made it in their bathtub, or so I'm told. And, uh, yeah, it's good. Uh, so, what's next on the agenda? This is a good one, but it's another cold weather fragrance. Thumbnail. Thumbnail. Okay, because this is a good thumbnail. This is a good thumbnail fragrance right here. This is Pierre Cardin. Shout out to my buddy, Aaron. Uh, uh, I mean, we don't speak or anything, but he's he's a good guy. Okay, um, this is, oh, it's, it's, it's a sprayer, another strong one, kind of, they all kind of are very similar, right, they all are kind of similar, but the best one in this whole category of, like, this whole category is this one right here, Maxim Sport Home. They're all similar. They're all kind of, you know, you could classify them as cheaper as this and that. They're all woody, spicy fragrances. They all kind of smell alike, but this is the best one in that category. When it, when it comes to woody, spicy, this is the king. Ah, now, we're going to go over Tenere. All right, show on the screen. Ten, see, Tenere is now Tenere. How come it's not even showing up? I'm pressing. I'm, I have to put uh, Paco or Bon. What the heck? Oh, hey, there it goes. Hey, it was there for a second. Oh, because it has the little accents. Okay. In terms of old school fragrances, this is different. Okay, this is different. Now, as somebody who grew up in the 70s, 
Okay. As somebody who actually grew up in the 70s, <clears throat> this is something like – I would think of like, you know, the women back then were a lot more butch, a lot more honest. They didn't wear makeup as much. They were just more down to earth. They were a little more brutal, but they were also kind hearted and they meant what they said. Like, even though I think this is a masculine fragrance, I could see a woman wearing this. Okay, it's an aromatic fougere. And I guess like anything with lavender is considered a fougere by Rosendo Moto. And he created one of the best fragrances in 2022, I think it was. Uh, Rosendo Moto, number five. This is, let's, let's go over the notes. These are the notes. And the best way I could describe this is like back in the seventies, there were like coal miners, you know, Eastern Kentucky. There's a great movie about it. And, you know, their wives were just down the earth. They took care of their man when their man, you know, their men died early because of black lung and whatever, but they were hardworking. They would go in those coal mines and they would live in the company housing. But the women were just like tough and rugged, but they were just like, they stood up for what they believed in. They were not like today's people, like, you know, Kevin said it in, in a stream, like they would stand up for what they believe in. That's what kind of fragrance this is. If like, th they're going to stand up for what's right. This is a beautiful, and honey stands out in this one, carnage, everything kind of stands out, but there's a little, and I, I don't want to use the word sweetness, but there is a little dry, unsweetened sweetener in here, which is like honey and amber. But man, and and some may say it smells a little like piss. I've heard that before. It smells like piss. I've heard that. And like, I mean, if you close your eyes, it could smell like piss, but... Dude, this is a royal, a royalty fragrance. This is amazing. This is not piss. This is just beautiful. Definitely a colder weather fragrance uh, that you could really enjoy. I, I mean, I love it. I love it. I don't wear it, but I, I, I look at the score. Look at the score. Four point three three out of five with 273 votes. So I have a mini of it and you could get a mini relatively cheap of this. I'm have to switch my other camera. I have two cameras hooked up and the, obviously it's like a small little box, right? But you could get a mini just to kind of smell it for not too expensive. And I love it. And I, I always think of the coal miner's wife who, you know, just kind of tough, like hard nose, but soft and caring, comes home. You know, when you come home from the coal mine, she has a nice hot meal ready for you. And she says, how was your day, honey? And that's what this is, honey. How was your day, honey? I kind of see it as a little unisex and sort of geared to those tough women of the 1970s 
who, who, who didn't wear makeup, who didn't have tattoos, who stood by their man, stand by your man. I mean, this was a, a running theme back then. They would be wearing Tenere, but men wear it because it's a masculine fragrance. Let me see. The chat. What is this double click to update? I don't understand this thing. Okay. Make fun of me? Ah, vintage piss. Yeah, it, it, it does have a, a pissy smell a little bit. But, like, I don't wear it, but hello, chat and Neil. ZA, shout out to South Africa. Yeah, so it's a beautiful fragrance that, like, I wouldn't really wear, you know. But I love smelling it because it goes straight to my cerebral cortex and does something. Now, this is one I would recommend. And one of the best rose fragrances. It's a different kind of rose fragrance, right? It's a masculine rose. This is Balenciaga Hohang Club. Balenciaga for home is, is good, uh, you know, but it's not as good as this. It, it's not even the same ballpark as this. Okay, so look at those notes. Masculine Rose. And what do you think the score is going to be on this? Yeah, exactly. There you go. I agree with your statement wholeheartedly. That's exactly it, Fernando. No, I don't like tattoos on women. I don't like women who talk a lot. I like women who have best friends that are women, not men. Um, this is... Now look. I could back up my claims that these are good fragrances. I could back up my claims. 4.34 with 158 votes. Yes, you said it. Now, these are strong fragrances. Now, if you want projection and all that, you'll get it with Hohang Club. And I did a video. I don't know if I took it down or whatever. But it was, in, you know, in Scarface when they were like in the club. Like Al Pacino with and, and uh, the other guy, his partner. Yeah, that's kind of like uh, what Ho Hang Club reminds me of. Tough, tough. Tough, but it's rose, it's rose centered. Okay, let me see um, the notes here. This is another, if you like rose, this is beautiful. But they're strong fragrances. I had a female friend whose boyfriend didn't like her being friends with me. It's insecurity. Casino. Yes. It's it's soothing. It's soothing. It's a very soothing rose. And it has carnation, of course. Geranium, orris root. It's calming. Like, like you see how I calm down a little? That's what this fragrance does. It sort of calms you down. It's it's tough, but you don't have to act tough. You know, it's like um, 
what is it called? Walk silently and carry a big stick. I don't even know the. the, the <laughs> I don't know. What did I come up with that? Uh, walk silently and carry a big stick. I don't know, man, where I'm coming up with this stuff. Uh, but anyway, those are, are the old school fragrances that I would highly recommend. I have more. Backup thumbnail. This is Duncan's favorite. And of course, thumbnail. Shout out to Ike. Ike does stuff. Arrogance, poor home. In terms of like, kind of like, okay, the whole woody spicy theme. This is a, this is, this is not an easy wear, but it's very masculine, extremely masculine, extremely strong. But I think of my dad, cause my dad wore stuff like this. I think of the Godfather, you know, kind of calm, but you, you could smell him across the room. And, you know, he meant business. He was serious. Arrogance, poor home. It's, it's awesome. And if you live in a cold environment and you're looking for that Godfather vibe, but you have to shave. You have to shave. I mean, what are you going to do? Like pour it on your body? Pour it on your shirt? You got to pour it on your face. Uh, it's very strong, very masculine. It's godfatherly. This is this is so much like the godfather. This is confidence in a bottle. Anyway, I just wanted to put a short little video out there. And oh, it's not going back in. And that's it. I just wanted to hang out, show my face. Um, oh, I know why. There's a little pamphlet in here. There's a little pamphlet for arrogance. Oops. Uh, anyway, camera's not focusing. But this is like godfather kind of fragrance. You're sure of yourself. You don't have anything to prove. You don't have to say anything. You're just kind of respected. Respect in a bottle. Shout out to the nine people who hung out. Um, I appreciate it. And let's see. Have a great Sunday. Take care. Just want to share some... Uh, stuff with you and that's it have a good one thank you a to z for popping in thank you for fernando thank you z a thank you captain blimp fernando again moose shout out to moose and captain blimp and the regulars pretty much the same people ultimate prime shout out and i think there was somebody else papa smurf cuddles crew um i'm not in the cuddles crew anymore kevin made that up so Cuddles Crew has been disbanded. Um, no more Cuddles Crew. I'm up for new ideas for my new uh, hand signal thing. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a good one.